Hey folks, uh, this is Archie Bunker and this uh, geometry lesson is a review on um, uh, area of polygons. It's a geometry lesson, uh, chapter 11. So it's a hard, it's, a, it's probably your, your second hardest test. Your, your first hardest test is right after this. So, so it just gets harder, you guys, but this is the end of the chapter or the end of the textbook anyways. Find the area of each figure. Okay, got a lot of these, you guys. Okay, so here we have a, a parallelogram and the area of a parallelogram is the base times the height right here, okay? I don't need that five centimeters there. I just need base times height. So so it's gonna be um, uh, seven times 4.7. So uh, I get the 32.9 and centimeters squared. Area is always centimeters squared or inches squared or whatever the units are squared. Next chapter is volume. And that's always gonna be to the third. It's gonna be cubic units. Okay, find the area of uh, this guy right here. It's a right triangle. Okay, I got to use Pythagorean theorem. If you don't know your P triples by now, uh, you're never going to know it. So just go ahead and crank out to your Pythagorean theorem right there. I gave a list of P triples. If you are not my student, and you want a list of P triples, you guys. I already knew it was going to be 12 because it was a 5, 12, 13 triangle. Give me an email. My email is jbullock, B U L L O C K, at sanmon.edu. And I'll send you a list of a whole bunch of them. Anyway, so that's uh, that's 12 right there. And so the area is going to be base times height divided by 2. Okay? Depends on which one you want to be the base, you guys. So the area of a triangle is 1 half base times height. So uh, I don't know why I tilted it up right there. So 1 half uh, 5 times 12. You could have done 1 half 12 times 5. That's the base. That's the height right there. I don't know why I switched it up like that. Who knows? Anyways, 30 uh, feet squared. Okay, I still get the right answer. As you know me by now, uh, if you've been watching these videos and or in my class, you know I make mistakes all the time. All right. Okay, can you see a parallelogram over here and a triangle right here? It's a parallelogram plus a triangle. Can you see that? All right. Remember, parallelogram is uh, base times height. Triangle is one half base times height. Okay, and so the base on the parallelogram is 18. The base on the triangle is that 9 right there. And that 10 is the height for both of them, you guys. There's the 10 for uh, the height of the parallelogram. And there's the 10 out there for the, uh, the height of that triangle. So it's just mathematics. Now just go ahead and crank them out. And you get 225 centimeters squared, okay? All right, I had this one on my test. And a lot of kids missed that. All right, okay, this is a trapezoid. Trapezoids, we add the bases, uh, take half of that, and then times the height. Or you can take half the height. It doesn't matter. Or you can you can add the bases, times the height, and take half of that. Just take half one time, you guys. Don't take it more than once, okay? So uh, we get um, uh, 103.5, and in this case, meters squared. All right, okay, uh, this is a rhombus because of the four equal sides and the area of a rhombus. There's two ways. Since it's a parallelogram, it's base times height, but there's no base and height in here because there's no right angles. Uh, or you can do half the product of the diagonals. Okay, on rhombis and kites, it's always half the product of the diagonal. So if I just multiply 40 times 32 and take half of that, I get 640 inches squared, okay? All right, same thing on here, half the product of the diagonal. So we're going to go um, uh, multiply those, take half of that, and there's your answer on that guy. All righty? All right, so this time it's a rhombus that has side 13, and one of the diagonals is 10. All right, and so here's my rhombus, side 13, and one of the diagonals is 10. Okay, remember, a rhombus is a parallelogram, and parallelograms, the diagonals bisect each other. So instead of 10, I'm going to make it 5 and 5. And the other thing about rhombis, you guys, rhombis and squares, only rhombis and squares and kites, uh, the diagonals are perpendicular. They make a right angle. So i got another 5, 12, 13 right triangle right there, okay? And then I'm going to do uh, area of a rhombus is half the product of the diagonal. So if I go ahead and multiply 10 times 24, because this is 10 right here. And so if that's 12, that's 12. So that's 24. So 10 times 24, half of that's 120. 120 inches squared. Always put your square units. Okay, this one's a regular hexagon with side 10. Okay, there's a couple ways to do it. I'm going to show you, the. Uh, I think, the quicker, more efficient way. Okay, there's my regular hexagon. Hexagons make up six equilateral triangles. Whoops, what did I do there? Let's see. Uh, I got lost with something. I'll come back to that. Okay, uh, boy, I got my notes all messed up. <clears throat> okay, so hexagons makes up six equilateral triangles. So one of those equilateral triangles is side squared root 3 over 4. 
Okay, so side squared is going to be 10 squared. 10 squared root 3 over 4. 10 squared is 100. 100 over 4 is 25. So one of those triangles is 25 root 3. So we have six of them, you guys. So I'm going to multiply 6 times 25 root 3, and I get um, 150 root 3. All right, I, I did my notes a little flip-floppy in here. Let's go back and get number 9 here. Okay, so here's number 9. Sorry about this, you guys. I'll fix that. Uh, a regular pentagon, okay, so this regular pentagon right here is, uh, uh, if it's a regular pentagon, then we just, we got to find the perimeter and times this thing called the apothem. The apothem is, it comes out from the center and it goes perpendicular to a side right here. So this 6.5 is my apothem right there. So I need to get the perimeter of this rascal, whoops, uh, and the perimeter of that rascal is going to be, um, uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, uh, you can do either Pythagorean theorem to get uh, this x right here. So I can go 6.5 squared plus x squared equals 8 squared. Or we can use some trigonometry sine cosine tangent. And, and I know you guys can do the Pythagorean theorem. That's fine. You can do that, you guys, and get a decimal on this. But I'm going to show you uh, using a little bit of trig because it will help you on other ones where you can't use the Pythagorean theorem. Okay. So what I'm going to do is it makes up five central angles here that are congruent and all the way around is 360 so if I take 360 and divide it by 5 that's 72 degrees that's 72 that's 72 this whole angle here is 72 and 72 so this has to be 36 and 36 because that apothem cuts it in half right there okay so that's 36 right there and then I'm going to go ahead and use um, uh, I can either use um, the sine, which would be opposite over hypotenuse, or the tangent, which would be opposite over adjacent. i got to have x involved. I went ahead and did sine right here, you guys, and I get x to be 4.7. So if that's 4.7, the whole side length is going to be 9.4. Alrighty, and then so the whole perimeter, you guys, is going to be 5 times 9.4. And so now I can go ahead and use my theorem. The area is one half, the apothem times the perimeter. And if I did everything right, I got 152.75 square units, whatever the units are on that. Okay, I got to skip by my number eight again. I'll fix that when I uh, go back into my class here. All right, so here's section B, you guys. Okay, in the figure, the triangles are similar. Find each. Okay, so I got this is three and this is five. So my scale factor is three fifths, three to five. Okay. All right, so that's number one. Scale factor is 3 to 5. All right, 3 to 5. All right, and I like writing them as a fraction, 3 over 5, same thing. Okay, the ratio just equals the scale factor. So the ratio of the perimeters is just equal to the scale factor, so it also equals 3 fifths. The ratio of the areas is your scale factor squared. So I square 3 and square 5, and I get 9 20 fifths. Now I'm going to use that 9 20 fifths and set up a proportion with this 4.5. So I'm going to call the area of this guy x over here. So then I just say that that scale factor of the ratio of the areas, I'm sorry, the ratio of the areas is 9 over 25. Then I set that equal to the 4.5 over the unknown area. And then go ahead and cross multiply, and you should get 12.5. Uh, okay, feet squared. It's always in units squared, you guys. All right, what else do I have? Okay, a kite has these coordinates right here, so graph the kite, then find the area. Remember, the area of a kite is half the product of the diagonals. So there's that. There's the diagonals right there, 6 and 7. So I'm going to multiply 6 times 7 and take half of that, so I get 21 units squared. Alrighty? Alright, so find the indicated measure. Okay, so we got sectors of circles here. Okay, so if this is 210 right there, remember 360 all the way around, so this has to be 150 right there. Okay, well let's first get the area of the whole circle and the circumference of the whole circle, you guys. The area is pi r squared, so I get 100 pi because the radius is 10, and the circumference is 2 pi r. Okay, so the area of this sector right here, since this is 150 degrees, it's 1 50th over 360 times the area of the circle. Okay, and then go ahead and play the reduction game. The zeros cancel. 3 goes into 15 and 36, and I think it keeps canceling, you guys. Yeah, 3 goes into 15 5 times, into 36 12 times, and then I noticed 4 goes into 12 3 times, 4 goes into 125 times, so I'm left with uh, 5 times 25, which is 125 pi. Don't forget the pi all over 3. Okay, and then the length of the arc, I just did my circumference formula, so 2 pi r, you guys. 
So it's uh, so it's my my uh, circumference is 20 pi. So I did the 150 over 360 times 20 pi and reduced that, and I got uh, uh, 25 pi over 3. Okay, let's clean it up here. So 150 over 360 times the circumference right there, and then I played the reduction game. Okay, and then the length of arc uh, ADB. Okay, so what you can do is do 20 pi minus uh, the length of this arc if you want and then play the fraction game or you can just do uh, 210 over 360 and I think I did 210 over 360 times the circumference and then the area is 210 over 360 times the area okay so this this length right here ADB uh, is this uh, thing over 360 this number over 360 and the area is going to be this number over 360 times the area form and then, then reduce you guys so so there's your answers to that guy right there all right, what else do I have for you? Okay, find the area of the shaded region. Okay, on this one, you guys, this one is a circle minus a square. If I took out that square, I'd be left with that shaded region right there. Circle is pi r squared, and then the square is half the product of the diagonals. Well, if this is 8 right here, this is 8 right here, so this whole side is 16, which means this length right here is 16. So that's where I did half of 16 times 16, because the square is a rhombus, you guys. So half the product of the diagonals. You can do, um, you know, this this would make an isosceles right triangle if I drew that right there. And that side right here would equal this side right here. And it's an isosceles right triangle. This little piece would be 4 root 2. But, you know, so the whole side is 8 root 2. So 8 root 2 times, ah, it's easier just to do half the product of the diagonals because the diagonal's staring right at you. All right, find the area of this shaded region. Okay, this one's going to be the rectangle minus half a circle. Can you see half a circle right there? Okay, circle is pi r squared. The rectangle is just uh, uh, base times height. So 8 times 4 is 32. So 32 minus uh, pi r squared. Well, pi r squared, um, if that radius is 2, 2 squared is 4. So the whole circle is 4 pi. So half the circle would be 2 pi. Okay, so 32 minus 2 pi inches squared. All right, find the probability that the point chosen at random is on, on PQ. So PQ has length from negative 5 to positive 5, so that's 10 units right there. That it's also on RS, so RS goes from negative 2 to 4, which is 6. So I get 6 tenths, uh, which reduces to 3 fifths. All right, one more, an area. Find the probability at the randomly chosen point in the figure. So in this figure, in the whole figure here, lies in the shaded region, okay? So remember, probability is favorable divided by total. Your total area is the big triangle, and the favorable is the area of the shaded region. Okay, so it's basically the top divided by the whole. Okay, the top divided by the whole. So remember, triangles are one half base times height. So one half seven times six, one half fourteen times twelve. Now right here it said that these two lengths were equal. Can you see those tick marks are still there, you guys? And if the whole thing's fourteen, look, I'll go back, you guys. It said that they were equal right there. So if the whole thing's fourteen, then each one's seven right there. All right, so I get one fourth on that, okay? All right, that should uh, get you prepared for the test. And uh, remember, this is a hard test, you guys. A lot of kids really struggle on this. So anyways, if you're in my class, I would assign that for your homework. Take care, everybody.